and welcome to Legislative Report. I'm State Representative Mario Scavallo, and today I'm really thrilled to be at Listec Jewelry here in East Stroudsburg on Crystal Street, and my guest is Jill McLaren. I, Jill, I have to tell you that I've been wanting to do this show with you for so long because of the different things that you do in the community. And I, one of the things I'm just going to mention, out here on Crystal Street, all the decorations are on these on, on the walls out here because it was just bland, there was graffiti, and you, you brightened up the whole street here. But the other things that you, in the community, you step forward and you help out all the nonprofits with your pens. One of the things I do, I do the uh, Red Cross, not the Red Cross telethon, but the, the um, uh, hospital telethon, the, mm. the auction. And you have all these pins, and I always say, I can't believe the value you put on it because I know the work and the expertise that goes into it. Those pins are worth so much more. Well, thank you for your kind words. We, we appreciate that. And it is all handwork. It's yeah. uh, a rare thing where we call ourselves fuss pots because the work is so intricate and so delicate that the people that work with me have become very fine craftsmen. And mm. I'd be delighted to have you showcase them later. Yeah, we would definitely want, want to see that. I was watching them. I was up there. We had an event here. It was the, the university, the university pin. Oh, yes. And, and there was an event here, and I, and I somehow the, we were, went upstairs, and I couldn't believe it. They're just... Yes, one little bead, one little wire at a time. And it's, there's so much that goes into it. So tell us about how did you get into this? It all started at Girl Scout camp. Oh, wow. Yes, I, when I was 13, uh, I attended a Girl Scout camp, and the moment I entered an arts and crafts area that uh, was teaching jewelry making, mm -hmm. uh, from that moment on, I did not want to ride horses or do archery or go swimming. I had to have that thing. That's mm -hmm. all I wanted to do. It was called copper enameling, the mm -hmm. form that they taught. And uh, I went home, and I must have yacked it up really loud. I was only 13 at the time. And my parents bought me everything I needed, all the equipment to do that at home. And by the time I was 14, I was exhibiting in my first outdoor craft show in Scranton at the first Scranton Lackawanna Arts Festival, uh, somewhere back in the 60s. And uh, that's, when I, that's how I got my start. So I have been making and selling things for the greater part of my life. Wow. Yeah. So you beat me. I was 19 in the market. You were 14 yeah. in the entrepreneur. Yeah, I was. I was. I what I had, what I didn't have the words for at the time was the fact that I had met something that would shape the rest of my entire life. Mm -hmm. And uh, I give that credit to the Girl Scouts because they opened that door for me, and it has never closed. And it's amazing because when you do something you enjoy doing, it's not a job. Exactly. So I have uh, a lifetime surrounded by beauty, and when you. When I take you to the studio upstairs, you will see an organized chaos, but the elements that we work with are exceedingly beautiful and bright and sparkly, and we spend all day, every day, in a creative mode, and that yeah. makes for a good life for me. Do you do some of the designing or, or today, or is, or is it a variety of people? There was a time that I did the, the designing exclusively mm -hmm. until we, uh, when I have a bunch of prototypes, I gather everybody and ask their opinions on what's going on, you know, mm -hmm. who, what will sell. And somebody said, I had a pin of a, of a woman with her wild hair and her arm in the air. And somebody said, wait a minute. And they climbed around the boxes and went to the top and they brought down this little bit and they put a hula hoop around her. And I thought, that is perfect. But I would not have thought of that. So that's when I began to open up the designing. Uh, and so it's a shared process. Uh -huh. There's two of us that do the bulk of it, but we are always inviting somebody, tell me what you think. Should it be a different color? How would you make this better? So it becomes shared. But when I design with the not-for-profit groups, they send me a committee, and it isn't that I will design for them, I will design with them, so yeah. that it becomes our shared pin and not just something that I have done That's for a great them. way of looking at it, of doing it, because you, the input, it sometimes, like you just said earlier, you didn't expect, you, know, you, you, didn't, you wouldn't have thought of the whole thing. I wouldn't have done it. So yeah. all of our minds together yeah. are better than mine alone. Yeah. And when I opened up that process, the jewelry now continues to flow and grow in directions that I may not have envisioned, mm -hmm. and it only gets better that way. Yeah, but that's to your credit, too. You hired the right people that, that, uh, that are up there. <laughs> Think yes. about it. You, hi you have the right people working for you. It's an extension of you, and, you know, they got your training, and now they, you know, they, they, they add to it. And uh, it's, it's, it's great to see that growth. You know, it really is. We like each other, too. We yeah. spend all of our... I just was... Uh, 
took somebody up there and I realized we have a life sentence together up, <laughs> upstairs and we like each other. We, yeah. we listen to radio podcasts, car talk and wait, wait, don't tell me. And yeah. it's a, a deep and appreciative camaraderie that yeah. happens. And I'm lucky to spend my days with so many people that I enjoy. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. yeah. Let's talk about the shop here a little bit. We're in the back of the shop here and the various things that you have here. Would you like to know the story of how the building came to yeah, us? Yeah, well, right. great. Let me tell that story. Uh, this bank was, at the time, Monroe Secure Citizens? Mellon. It was Mellon. Mellon. It has gone through so many changes. Yeah. It was uh, Mellon Bank. And out of the blue one day, they came to us and said, oh, would you like to buy this building? Uh, which, of course, had been something we couldn't even dream because it was mm -hmm. such a huge uh, offering. Uh, but banks are not interested in buildings like this. There's no drive up. Right. And at that, that time, I don't even know if there was, maybe there was an ATM out front. And banks are all one stories now. This is three stories. And it was, it's a white elephant yeah. to them. They don't need that kind mm -hmm. of thing anymore. So uh, we said, sure. Uh, we barely scraped together uh, the down payment to uh, hold. And then it took two years for them to go to closing because they had a new building to go in down, uh, down near Walmart. Mm -hmm. That collapsed. The offer fell through. And we said, we want to have a gallery. So they said, take these offices and you can uh, renovate them. Mm -hmm. And we said, well, where's the keys? And they said, okay, this is what's happening. We'll give you the keys. Let's go to closing this week. But we would like to give you the mortgage, but we want to stay and rent. So for 14 years, they stayed and they paid the mortgage and the taxes and most of the utilities. And that was the only way that we could afford to be here. Yeah. And so I consider that divine intervention that allowed us to have wow. a, a building that Dominic Lockwood used to say, this is the bank that pins built. <laughs> so that's how we got to be here. And yeah. that's how we, we opened the doors. I have a friend that is a he calls himself a madcap genius. And these used to be four offices here. And so he came in with a magic marker and went from office to office and drew these crazy lines. And then he said, cut that out and call me when you're done. And then uh, that's how we got all these oddball shapes in here. And it uh, gives beautiful framing to wow. each of the sections within the store. Amazing. It really does. And I never noticed it. You know, you just, now that you're looking, I'm looking out the four rooms, you can see it. Yes, but nobody would have guessed that because no. of how it's, uh, no. how it's cut up and turned into, um, it's an unusual and wacky space, but it lends uh, an air of uh, uh, whimsy and um, laughter and upliftment when you yeah. come. Yeah, very nice. You just like said divine intervention, but, uh, but look at what, ha what, what you have here now, it's just beautiful. You want to talk about some of the some of the things you have? Like you know, I know that you just outside of the Listec jewelry, you do have other items because mm -hmm. I purchased a couple of teethers here, jewelry teethers for the oh for babies, babies. Yes. Oh, they're right. In fact, they're right yeah, over. They're yeah. right over there. Yeah. Uh, jewelry is our specialty, yeah. including uh, these necklaces that you're speaking about for women that have babies, and babies will always pull on whatever you have, and these are made specifically for teething. I didn't know you had those. That's, oh, that's yes, absolutely I purchased delightful. them, yeah. <laughs> that, well, and I can guarantee you we're the only place in town you're going to get those. Yeah. Uh, but what is right behind you, which happens to be my passion, are gardening implements. Mm -hmm. And I have found a company that offers these uh, shovels that are um, ergonomically helpful to your wrists because mm. most gardeners have wrist problems and so this round circular part offers you opportunities to hold onto the shovel in different ways and I have transplanting shovels and spading shovels and fabulous pitchforks which I don't have myself so I'm going to use one of those and so we've opened a garden section back here. I have specific vases for dahlia and peony growers. They're mm -hmm. specific for those flowers and they really showcase them beautifully and we're going to expand this garden section even more. I have two assistants upstairs that are both pregnant, and so we will be expanding our baby section. That's why there's the, the teethers that you mm -hmm, purchased. Mm -hmm. And um, we also have uh, photographic alphabets from uh, some artists in Arkansas, and uh, they're called Landmark. They're uh, in the back. And what ends up here is when we go to market, even if it doesn't relate to jewelry specifically, then we pick it up if we think it's fabulous. We've got these swell bottles that are stainless steel thermoses. You can pour a pot of tea into one of these at six o'clock in the morning and at six at night it will still be hot. They're unusual, they're lightweight, there's no glass involved in them and we have probably eight of them because we use them for all kinds of different things. 12, tw 12, 12 hours? hours? 12 hours to keep hot, 24 it'll keep cold. I've never seen a thermos like it. 
you should get one because they're fabulous. You can have hot tea all day long without having to wait. I think I might. <laughs> no, that's no because you know, I'm always driving. I mean, sometimes you're in a car a couple of hours. Right. And you know that you know the the coffee. How off? How long does it hold? No, you can go to Starbucks at six a.m. and and buy six at night. You'll still be able to drink it and be very happy with it. Wow. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna yeah, try one. Commercial for us in Starbucks. <laughs> You got some beautiful pens here. You want to talk about some of the pens? Yeah, these are some of my favorites. And um, I think that what I want, you know who Rachel Moyer is. Yes, I do. That's okay, the... well, Rachel Moyer is the reason that we started designing pens to begin with. This particular one right here, unfortunately, Rachel's son died on a basketball court. And she always wondered whether or not if there had been a defibrillator there, whether or not he would still be with us. So she made it her life's passion to make sure there was a defibrillator in every single school in this nation. Yeah. So she came to me one day and asked, could we make a pin for Greg, her son, um, for a fundraiser? And I'd never done fundraisers before. So this uh, symbolizes the heartbeat of the defibrillator, and inside is his basketball number, 20, oh, 23. 23. And so this pin started uh, the whole idea, because once this began, then other not-for-profits have come to us, and we've done over 93. And I know in Monroe County alone, when I started, there were only 90 not-for-profits to begin with. So I, I think we've covered just about everybody. But because of her, this one uh, was begun. This is uh, for the Make-A-Wish Foundation. This uh, is retired. Mm -hmm. It's no longer available, but mm -hmm. we did this for the Make-A-Wish. The glass stones that I use on these pieces are vintage glass stones that were handmade in Eastern Europe. Almost all of these artisans are gone, and that industry was destroyed in World War II. Every family in every village had a glass annealing oven, and they handmade these for Avon, and Avon, Trafari, and Swank. Mm -hmm. They were imported just the same way that uh, jewelry goes in and out of fashion the same and follows uh, color and clothing. So my life's work is to celebrate the work of these past craftsmen because once that industry was destroyed in the 1940s it returned but never to its full glory so there are some styles and some effects that died with those families and have never been reproduced so my work is to celebrate their handwork that is little known because it's fashion jewelry people think it's not uh, not worthy yeah. but i know what it takes to make those stones so my work celebrates what they did this is a, an example of one of those stones. This is for the wildlife rehab people in Cherry oh, Valley. Oh, yes. Yeah, you know yes. who they are? Oh, very well. When we have our sales, they bring some of their animals up here. And uh, this was after one of their little owls called Flame, a little sawweed owl. And so this is uh, in honor of Flame. And sometimes they come and they have an albino crow that just, it's such a rare yeah. animal. Uh, so. I'm hoping maybe to do that crow at some point. I'm down there once a year. To, oh, to, are you? I, I always visit. Oh, I, it's amazing what they're able to do. And they're so loving. Oh, they really they love yes. what they do. They love each other, and they, the, the both of them are so. I know it's a long story, but the the husband was um, um, an art. Uh, he actually was an actor in New York, and he, and he uh, played in Serpico as a police oh, officer. I didn't and that. later on, what does he become? A police officer? I hire him poking about regional. No kidding. <laughs> yeah. So next time you say, you could say, you know, you were in. <laughs> yeah, he was a. He played a police officer in the movie Serpico with uh, with uh, uh, Al Pacino. You know, you wouldn't know that because you know what he tells us his favorite thing to do uh -huh. is to get a beer at five o'clock and go and sit with the baby goats. <laughs> <laughs> He's changed. So, yeah. <laughs> He's changed. Yeah. They take care of our, our wildlife, and here's a little plug. The little birds have had the worst time this winter. Feed them. Even now, there's nothing for them to eat, so yeah, feed with, your little birds. With all, the, with all the snow and all yes. the... Yes. Yeah. yeah, they're suffering. Um, but I get to know that because I work with, uh, with these people in, mm -hmm. in the community, and that's part of why I like to do this work, because it makes a vast support net and interconnection to one another. And that's the most, as a representative, you know that. The most yeah. important thing is knowing who's around you and what their needs are and what can we do? You know, sure. How can we help sure. in some small way? Yeah. This is for the Op uh, Stroud Regional Open Space. Wow. They raised funds for the uh, bike paths. Uh -huh. And it's the double trees. These are the, um, the creeks that are involved. We have um, uh, biking and park activities, which shows up down here. There's some fishing, mm -hmm. there's little butterflies. And uh, Beautiful this, was, yeah, this was made to raise funds for the open space. 
This one was uh, built for the cancer center, the brand new uh, mm -hmm. can sense, cancer mm -hmm. center up here. It has hope on it, and that is what the center has to offer for people that uh, have found themselves mm -hmm. in a situation. And this um, makes our region, brings it right up My gosh, uh, yeah. it's to one the, the national yeah, level. Yeah. We're at we're at the you're you're exactly right from where we were to where we are today. The Tremendous equipment change. in there is is top of the line. The machinery in there that they can just pinpoint with this with it, rather than in the old days if you had um, any kind of um, radiation, you're not just getting the cancer, you're getting everything around it. Right. Today the machinery is so minute that they can hit the radiate that radiate just the cancer. It's amazing with the equipment that's in there in Little Monroe County. What used to be Little Monroe County. Yeah. <laughs> well, because I've been here for 30 years, and uh, it has grown and changed quite a bit. And I personally embrace that change because the ethnic food that has shown up here I has gotcha. really made a difference. Yeah. Our, our population tripled in the 30 years. so tripled. Well, see, when I first started here, I could not have had a shop because there, wasn't, there were not enough people here to support us. Right, and you, you depend basically on, on visitors and you can't, you have to be able to survive on your, on your local and the visitors is your gravy. That's how, that's how I tell business. That's exactly right. You know, am I right? That's exactly, yes, you're absolutely right because if, the visitors find us sometimes but the mm -hmm. locals know we're here. Yeah, the locals, if you survive on the locals and the visitors is the gravy and hopefully we can continue to have you know, a little bit more about the, what happened across the street. And I know you had something to do with it, saving the old uh, station there. Well, uh, that just opened on Saturday. Yeah. Oh, that's right. I saw you there. Uh, yes. Were I you, wasn't you there. You weren't there? No. I didn't know I about it. I didn't know about it. I found out about it until afterwards. But I've been there before. I've been, you know, I've been, I've been going in there. You know, I, I gave them grants for that belt for the tower on right. the other side. Right. You no, know, I like to, I love history, you know, and uh, to be able to hold a piece of it, preserve it. Which was, you know, it was great that the, everybody worked, the commissioners, the local municipality, and all the people that were involved, and, and look what happens. Well, you that know? takes a village. Yeah, it takes I, a village. I went to the, to the opening, and it was even better than I had expected it to yeah. be. It was a labor of love that brought that there. Yeah. And I consider that station to be sort of a sister building to us, because we're the two historical anchors here. Mm -hmm. And to have that come back online that nice? really makes, uh, makes a, a symbiotic heartbeat for us. Yeah. And uh, we will be working quite a bit with Sue Randall over mm -hmm. there. My sister, who is the manager here, does our outreach and media work. Mm -hmm. And she has made arrangements. Uh, sometimes they do the Christmas decorations together. And we are going to look for many ways in the future for us to connect with them and connect with the track side now. Thank heavens that's back. Yeah. Uh, because this street was very dark without a restaurant over there. They're going to bring, you know, and, and with all of that, that helps everybody. That helps all the shops. It helps right. everybody in, 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 on the street. And so you, you, with being holding on to that piece of history, it'll only draw people back. And they just did a spectacular job of bringing it back. I, yeah. You know, I was afraid that it wouldn't be able to have the charm, but they went even further because they took it back from being a restaurant and converted it to the train station it once was. Yeah. And that's lovely. Yeah. I, I was, I've been in there while, in the process of them doing the renovations and all. Matter of fact, the, the governor's folks were down here um, about six months ago, and we took them through there to show them what, what, what was happening. But it, it's, it, you know, once you lost it, you lost it forever. And yeah. the fact, that, just think about that. You know, some, a building like that, you lose it. You lose it forever. And the fact that we're able to save it, and and that's you, like you said, it's everybody. Not just, you know, everybody gets together. The, the good things that you can do. Well, that was a huge effort and years yeah. in the making. Yeah. And so now it's a fabulous space to rent for uh, catered events, musical events. Mm -hmm. uh, the farmer's market will take place around it. Is that nice? And so yeah. bringing it back online is really only going to enrich this whole, yeah. this whole street. Yeah. I'm very grateful to have it back. Yeah, that's good. And well, thank you for the work that you did to help us get it. Oh, it, it, it was an easy decision, believe me. It was an easy decision. So we have a few more here, Okay. Right? Uh, this is, uh, believe it or not, the West End Fair. We did this for the West End Fair. And the reason you probably have not seen it around is because they sold it out in two weeks. Most pins wow. might take two years to sell out. They did this pin and sold it out in two weeks. The sunflower for... Uh, it was sort of a symbol for their fair mm -hmm. and uh, the little rooster here for agriculture and green and growing things. And there's also a little horse and... An apple on the bottom, so it's all about that the sold out in a few weeks. Yeah, it, at, they sold it at the fair, and it was gone in those two weeks. They were fun to work with because yeah. they decided, do we want a tractor? You know, yeah, I would have yeah. done the tractor because I have a little John Deere myself, and uh -huh. I would have. I loved 
the idea of the tractor, but they thought the women would like this one better. Yeah. So we went uh, in the end for that. Well, sure, the women are going to be wearing it, so you want to make sure that, and that is a beautiful piece. Yeah. You got like the colors and the... Uh, and this is one of the, the antique stones that yeah, I was telling you about. Yeah, yeah. And the last pin here was also one of the earlier pins that we started with. This is for hospice, the new hospice house that mm -hmm. was, was built. Mm -hmm. And the symbol is this. They care for the body as the soul departs. So this is how they care for their physical body and then soul gets to move on from a very peaceful and loving setting. And this has been one of our all-time top sellers. This, yeah. Wow. So that's uh, a short tour through mm -hmm. what we have done and do do with the community. Um, I love the work, as I said, because it's a shared design. It's not just what will I do for them, it's what we can do for yeah. each other. You did an RSVP piece, right? Oh, the, yes. And I purchased quite a bit of them, and I handed them out as gifts to, to people. That, and uh, it was um, a beautiful piece. It's a little, yeah, it was a little uh, white star yeah. with swirls all yeah. around it. beautiful piece. But every one of them has their own uniqueness, you know? You, know, you can't say, well, it looks like this one. It doesn't. <laughs> we try all, hard. Am I right? Yes. They're all unique, and they're just beautiful. Each group that comes has that uh, unique quality to it, and mm -hmm. that's what we try to, to extract from them. They will, every time somebody sits in that seat and says, oh, we don't know anything about designing, and the truth is they don't, but they... We draw out of them what is important to them uh -huh. and what will work with them, and they tell us about that. And then we offer them maybe this many different prototypes, and we say, which direction shall we go in? And then together we take the bits and bobs and, and, put, and figure them out and go from there. So people that sit in that chair do know it's my job to draw it from them and then to interpret what it is that is in their hearts. Yeah. That's our job. I was looking up on the wall there. You had the... Um Dorothy and the Wizard of Oz. That's a great story. Yeah. Yeah, glad you brought that. <laughs> yeah, Scott, oh, Scott will get the board. Um, oh. The college, ESU, uh -huh. in April is doing a production of the Wizard of Oz. Mm. And so what is happening with, this is uh, something else my sister has, has managed to put together. She's gone to the theater department and their stage set designer, who also works in Manhattan, is going to design our window with Wizard of Oz, oh, wow. and we're going to put our pins in that. And also Sue Randall, the downtown manager, has made arrangements. They are going to paint the yellow brick road on Crystal Street and bring some of the characters down to sing some of the songs to add on Saturdays to advertise for that. That's part of the way that uh, uh -huh. we are connected. Plus, that whole week of the performance, any of the Wizard of Oz pins that sell, we will give 50% of the monies back to the theater department for the college. So uh, that's, that's our story, and eventually that'll come well, up. Well, it's, 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 you're pretty busy, which is good. Yeah, suddenly, that just happened. <laughs> well, that's, you know what happens. It's, I, I used to say in the, in the business when I had the restaurant, i say, a bus just pulled up. <laughs> We're happy and that's for good. That. Yes. Let them pull up, yeah. you know. We could use a bus. But you had do you other do you other other things like that where you had multi pins? I've just yes, I've just started um, Alice in Wonderland. Huh? Uh, the Cheshire cat with that she, it's a purple uh, cat with a big pearly grin to uh, herself. Because uh, these are classics and they are also out of the copyright, so mm -hmm. I'm allowed to use them. Uh, here it comes. Oh, beautiful. Now that I I looked at that, that caught my eye. Yes, this is, this is our, our, our Wizard of Oz collection. This is the ruby slippers for uh, Dorothy. Uh -huh. The lion is for courage. And I have uh, many women tell me that they will wear this when they're about to face like a board meeting or something that they need courage for, so they wear that. This is over the rainbow with a, an exquisite, uh, this is called black opal handmade stone. This is an effect that mm -hmm. very few people can do today. Mm -hmm. The scarecrow, this is Galinda the Good Witch. Mm -hmm. This is the Tin Man. When I was building the Tin Man, my husband Scott was having a total knee replacement, and I put um, hearts on the knees for him when I was building that. Oh, pen. wow. This is Toto, uh, the Dorothy's dog in a basket, and this is the Emerald City. Right now on my bench upstairs, I'm working on a house with a tornado with a bicycle on it that landed on the witch. Oh, so my gosh. That's, that's coming out for next fall. And, and look at the, the prices. They're, for that type of Of handwork. Work and handwork. I, you know, I, I say it. I don't know if you ever hear about it, but I say it during the time. I say, I, I say it says 56, but it doesn't. That You can't buy it. This is over $100. Because there's a lot of work that goes into these pens. Only somebody that has worked with their hands understands that. Yeah. But when I entered the market 30 years ago, 
I had a lot of colleagues that worked in gold and silver and diamonds, mm -hmm. and I decided that good design doesn't have to cost a lot, but mm -hmm. you have to be able to make as many pieces as possible so that we would offer affordable jewelry at mm -hmm. really reasonable prices so that I could have as a lot of customers and not just one or two. Because gold and diamonds, if I were to make a diamond ring, I might get one customer on a, on a weekend. Yeah. But for this stuff, I get to talk to people all the time. Yeah. And that's yeah. the important part. I was looking for a photo. My wife made, uh, for my, my granddaughter, uh, the Wiz uh, she made her Dorothy collection. <laughs> <laughs> and I couldn't find it, but I'll, I'll show it to you off camera. I, I'm sure it's here. But the, and the, the, the slippers and the same color. And, oh, no kidding. And there she is. She's sitting down like, and now, now someone else wants to borrow the costume for next year. Because she did a good job. Yeah, yeah, really. And it's classic. This, even kids today, although oh. I have to tell you, my brother's 58, and he still can't watch The Wizard of Oz because of those monkeys. He, ah. won't, he won't do it. And people are asking me, do the monkey, but it's like... It it's is so a, mean. It is a classic. That's absolutely beautiful. Thank you. So, and you, you said you did some others. Um, any other uh, outside of the um, uh, sets like this? You, you did the cat. The, you talked about um, the, the cat. Oh, the, the Alice in Wonderland. The, yeah, Alice in yes. Wonderland. Yes. Can I ask you to bring uh, the Cheshire cat? Yeah. Thank you. I did that. Well, also, it depends on what I'm reading. That's how I, part of how I design. God bless you. Yeah. There's a. Um, do you know the Master and Commander series yeah, by Patrick yeah, O'Brien? Yeah, yeah. Well, he did 21 books. Uh -huh. One winter, I sat down and I read all 21. Now, my husband read them two years before, and I was determined, I don't want to read about <laughs> war. But once I started those books, you got they are so, the characters are incredible, and they're, they're oh. wonderfully flawed, just like uh -huh. I am. And so after the, the Napoleonic Wars on the high sea, uh -huh. after that, that winter, I came out and I built a little three-masted ship. It's been retired now, so I don't have it. But out from the ship, we got a mermaid and a palm tree and, and sandals and seahorses and seashells. That, that series started an entire uh, section of the line, wow. uh, which has flowed through. And I, I retire pins every year, because mm -hmm. sometimes the stones are irreplaceable, and we, mm -hmm. we run out, and that's, we just can't go on. Yeah. So each of the pins that I'm telling you about that was started with the Patrick O'Brien series has since come and gone, but the reading you know, it shows up from the reading. Beautiful pen. Yeah, this is this. We thought we'd start with a Cheshire cat, mostly uh -huh. because people really, really dig cats. And we, the pearly whites, you know, in this in the story, the cat disappears and the smile is the last to go. So we thought we would start with the the cat with a big old smile, and see where we go from here. There's the Queen of Hearts and the Mad Hatter and. Um, and Alice herself. And you can go in 10 different directions. Yeah, oh, that, that can last me a very long time. Yeah. yeah. And I'm not completely done with the, with the Wizard of Oz e mm -hmm. either, but uh, Alice opens up a whole other cabinet. But I like that it's based in literature and in, in books that are classics. And uh, as I said, the Patrick O'Brien, I never expected to fall in love with him, but the yeah. Master and Commander yeah. series is pretty fabulous. Well, you know, how do we, some people might be living in a cave and not realizing where you are and about you. So, uh, you know, tell us, give us your address and, uh, and how they can contact you, especially if they want to do a special pin, a pin that, uh, you know, for their own organization. Okay, this is, you, uh, you are seated in the gallery at Liz Tech mm -hmm. at 95 Crystal Street in East Stroudsburg, Pennsylvania. It's easy to find us. Our bank has pillars on it, and we are sandwiched between the East Stroudsburg Hardware Store and the Lackawanna Hotel. In order to find our work, you can go to www.liztech.com. We have a full website. There's mm -hmm. a shopping cart there. You can purchase it there. But we'd like you to come here because sure. to see it in person is really uh, a worthy opportunity. Really if you would like to just have literature or more information about the fundraising pins, mm -hmm. go to fundraising at liztech.com and we will, you'll be in touch with us and we'll be happy to talk to you about what it takes to make that happen. Thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to visit with you. It's a delight to have you. Oh, thank you. And thanks for shining the light yeah. on us today. <laughs> Very nice. Mm -hmm. That's all the time we have for today's show. If you have any questions on anything you've just seen, you call, contact my local office, and the, the, all the information will be on the screen in a moment. And thanks for watching, and see you next time on Legislative Report. Mm -hmm.